Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and welcome back to Spotlights. So I mentioned in my Spotlight video that there are a few more things you can do with Spotlights that I did not cover and that I, for some reason, was not interested in covering them because I don't know why I said whatever I said in that video because I am. Let's do that. So um, there's one major thing that you can do with Spotlights and there's one minor thing that will happen to the code that some people may like as a result of that. If you look at this light, you'll notice that it's a hard edge. Uh, there is a there is a uh, distinct boundary between uh, fully illuminated light and none at all, and um, there's no uh, there's no fading around the edges or anything like that, except for when you like walk off at a distance beyond the um, the attenuation distance. And uh, fixing that's not too bad. Uh, it's just a little bit more math that you can add to the add to the fragment shader. Uh, if you want an idea of what to look like, this is a spotlight in one of my other projects. Uh, you can see there is um there is the light up here in this in this region where my mouse cursor is. Is my mouse cursor recording? My mouse cursor is recording, and it's uh, it's pointing off in this direction towards this this campfire thing, and there is a soft edge around the edge of the spotlight where it fades out. And then uh, it also fades out at a distance, as opposed to a hard edge. And uh, that's, as I said, not too bad. So if I were to look into the, um, the basic 3D stuff, which is a great name, the basic 3D stuff shader, this is the vertex shader. Um, it passes a bunch, of, a bunch of variants to the fragment shader. It doesn't really do anything else. This is the fragment shader. This is where most of the interesting stuff happens. So down here, where the um, the attenuation is, is initialized to zero, and then if the cone angle is greater than the light cutoff angle, then um, you decide that the fragment is within the light cone and you uh, you apply the lighting uh, via the attenuation value. So the minor thing that I mentioned that might make some people happy is getting rid of an if statement in a shader. Um, as I've said countless times, a single if statement is probably not going to be where your performance bottleneck is when you start having your game slow down because there's too much stuff in it. But if it makes you happy, it is possible to, to, um, to get rid of this with just a little bit of math and uh, linear interpolations and, and such kind of math. So I'm going to comment this whole thing out and I'm going to start it over. The end goal is to have an attenuation value calculated and we're just going to go about doing that a slightly different way than before. Okay, let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can get this all out in one try. If you've been paying attention to the to the Windows clock in the corner of my screen, you can already guess what what happened, or maybe I should say what didn't happen. So, for the sake of keeping things simple, let us make a um, let us define an inner inner angle, and this is going to be the uh, the angle at which light starts to fade out. You can think of the spotlight now having two cones instead of one 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 which is a uh, an inner cone, which is where the light is at full strength, and then the outer cone at which light fades out. I'm going to say inner cone equals... <sighs> I was originally planning to do this without creating another uniform, but uh, this value would look something like d cos cosine of, uh, let's say, 30 degrees, but in shaders, in shaders, uh, the trigonometry functions use radians, and I don't know what the what the radian value of 30 degrees is off the top of my head. Hey. I want to say it is pi 14159 because shaders don't have a built-in pi constant divided by 6.0 or 6.16 of pi is 30 degrees. What would that be? A twelfth of 360 degrees. So, uh, 360 degrees equals two pi radians, which is yeah, it will be pi divided by six. Like I said, this is something you probably want to make a uniform, like light inner cutoff angle or something like that. But let's uh, let's keep things simple and, and leave a note of of uh, exactly what that value is, as well as a reminder to uh, to make that to make that a uniform. Okay, next, I'm going to define another variable that is the uh, the strength of the light at each point. I'm going to call that F for usually in my head that stands for fraction. Um, I don't know if it may stand for something else in other people's heads. Uh, this is going to be a value between 0 and 1 where 0 equals no light received and 1 equals um, full light received. And this is simply going to be, what do I want? Cone angle divided by inner cone. It's pretty simple. 
Um, this is not quite the final calculation that this will be, but I want to um, I want to introduce the final part of it later after I show the after I show the shader uh, the spotlight shader working. Uh, let us now define the attenuation because I believe I said the end goal of what I'm going to do here. The three or four lines of code that I'm going to add are um, the end goal is to end up with an uh, an attenuation value that is uh, between zero and one, much like this. So float att is going to equal uh, f times uh, the original calculation. So that will be a maximum of uh, light range minus light distance divided by light range. So normalizing the uh, normalizing the light range in a sense and uh, and zero. If you want to, you could uh, you could mush f and the attenuation together into a single line of code, but that uh, that may that may get to a point where it's uh, it's a little hard to read because it's going to be a long line of code. So let's run the game. As I said, this is not 100% complete, but it should be uh, in the way of getting there. So you can see the light is much softer now, but it's not really a cone anymore. Um, it is it is a very wide, like half circle cone. It's really like a it's really more like a spotlight than anything else right now. And that is because there is one last thing we need to do. And that is, uh, instead of simply cone angle minus inner cone, that needs to be cone angle minus the uh, the original cutoff. What is, what is that? Light cutoff angle, I believe. So cone angle minus the light cutoff angle divided by inner cone minus the light cutoff angle. Uh, bear in mind where these parentheses are order of operations, if you put the parentheses and the minus signs and the divisions in the wrong place, things are going to end up uh, in places other than where they should end up. And this should this should be what I'm looking for. Okay, um, there is a darkening effect happening behind me, which is one, very cool, and two, uh, not what I'm looking for because I forgot to leave out a line that is uh, clamping, this, clamping this whole thing between zero and one so that light will never be stronger than one and darkness will never be, will never be uh, removing color rather than just um, leaving it with the unlit color. And there you have it. So there is now a fuzzy angle, uh, a, fuzzy, uh, a fuzzy region where the light fades out. Uh, you can see it best on the sides, but also in the, uh, in the middle you can see, if I, if I free my mouse cursor, around here about halfway between where the, um, the light is strongest and, and the edge starts to fade out and um, you can see it around the sides as well. So it looks like there is a uh, like a, a soft edge if you were to aim a flashlight or a headlight at something. And that may well be what you want. If you want to, um, if, you, if you want that to not be a thing, uh, you can always say uh, what would it be? You can just say the inner cone is the same as the uh, the cutoff angle, and that will shrink the uh, shrink the fuzzed radius to zero, and you are back where you started. Um, if you want some control over that at runtime, you could again make that a uniform. I'm not here to tell you what the best way for your game to use that would be. Um, lastly, this line here with subtracting the light cutoff angle. If you were to walk through this step by step, if you were to not take into account the inner cutoff angle here. Say the outer cone is 45 degrees, the inner cone is 30 degrees, and the um, the cone angle. So that would be the uh, direction between the light source, the point where the spotlight originates, and the uh, the particular fragment you're processing. If you say that value is 40 degrees, you would have 40 degrees divided by 30 degrees equals about 1.333 repeating to infinity. Uh, clamp that between zero and one, and that value is one. So that point of light is going to be uh, is going to be fully illuminated. 100%, uh, whereas you really would want that to be about two thirds, or sorry, one third, if the inner angle is 30 um, and the outer angle is 45. So by subtracting the outer cutoff angle, that would be, um, let's see, math, that would be 40 minus 45 equals negative five divided by 30 minus 45, would be ne which would be negative 15. Uh, negative five divided by negative uh, 15, the negatives cancel out, you have one third, which is the value that you want. That's just a fifth grade lesson on fractions. All right, I think that's it. Let me run the game again. 
not that I not that there's anything wrong with it the first time or that I've forgotten what it looks like. Uh, this is a little bit more on spotlights. It's got smooth edges. It's got somewhat finer control over exactly what the uh, what the cone looks like, how soft the edges are. As I said, if you were to make this a a uniform, and to some people, most importantly, there is no more if statement in the shader. I guess I'll delete that. I'm done with spotlights for real this time. That's it for uh, that's it for the three basic lighting types. There are certainly other things I want to do with shaders in the future. Uh, some other lighting tricks, perhaps. Perhaps some other lighting tricks. Uh, some other things, materials. I've wanted to get around to materials for a while. But that's it for now. Uh, as I said earlier, spotlights are really just point lights that are uh, that have their direction constrained. That only work in a certain direction. Uh, the math is quite similar. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there's a link to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, the code for this should be in the video description. Let me commit this change. And that should be in the video description once this video is public. I tried to post about two of these videos a week, depending on what happens. Uh, one, one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a game. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, stick around. I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Hull, Indie Punch, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to pronounce them out loud at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.